Hello, everybody. I'm going to an article on in vitro metabolic activation of vitamin D by using a multi component microfluidic liver, kidney, organ, and chip platform. In this article, the authors talked about, about vitamin deficiency, a global pandemic that affects approximately 1 billion people worldwide. This phenomenon has broad implications since accumulating evidence demonstrated the deficiency in this vitamin increases the predisposition to myriad of chronic diseases, such as cardiovascular disease and cancer. The human body can produce seven dehydrocholesterol vitamin, which is the uh, which in the skin is converted by UV light to free vitamin D3 and further to vitamin D3. For it to get into the bioactive form, two hydroxylation steps first occurring in the liver using 25 hydroxyvitamin D, which is the most reliable biomarker for vitamin D status, and a second hydroxylation step, which takes place in the kidneys, producing 125 uh, OHD, also known as calcium, which then binds to the nuclear vitamin D receptor, eliciting major changes in gene expression patterns in target cells. In cancer cells, for instance, Calcitriol treatment regulates the expression of genes involved in cell cycle regulation, apoptotic signaling, differentiation, and nutrient metabolism. However, there are different subject specific responses to vitamin D supplementation that avoid optimal implementation of this vitamin as a potential treatment to cancer. To study these responses and to uh, uh, challenge these issues, reliable experiment systems are on demand. One category of in vitro models which would address these issues is organ and chip. There are microfluidic platforms that aim to closely resemble different tissue types. Right now, multiple organ and chip systems have been developed. Data have shown that culturing cells in microfluidic environments confer several advantages, including enhanced cellular functionality. In some studies, cells cultured in microfluidic platforms maintain the functionality of multiple CYP enzymes. Also, CYP expression as well as aluminum uptake of renal tubular epithelial cells in microfluidic setups reported to be closer to their physiological content. The authors have also illustrated the potential use of microfluidic devices for continuous monitoring of CYP activity in living cells and the use of 3D mutilated platforms to mimic the liver lobule. The authors therefore propose that such multi compartment uh, platforms, multi microfluidic platforms, may be adopted in vitamin D research for various applications, including investigating the effect functionality of uh, SMPs in the vitamin D pathway on the metabolism and bioactivation of the parent molecule and novel vitamin D for drugs, as well as to study the influence of different dietary nutrients and synobiotics on vitamin D metabolism. They employed a custom two-compartment microfluidic chip, which is observed here, and seeded the first, compar first compartment with FG2 cells and the second with RPTEX cells. They mix sequential hepatic and renal vitamin D metabolism. This setup would enable cells to produce and release vitamin D metabolites, namely 25-OHD and 125-OH2D, into the oloid, which could then be applied on target cells to investigate the metabolites' biological activities. Here, HL60 acute myeloid leukemia cells were used to monitor the pro-differentiation effects of vitamin of bioactive vitamin D and thus provide evidence of the ability of the system to metabolize the vitamin. Here is the schematic uh, overview of the uh, chip set setup. The, the chip consists of one compartment with liver cells and one compartment with uh, kidney cells. They are connected by a microchannel that is located uh, here. The cells are fed fed with um, vitamin D3 with intermedia containing vitamin D3. They will be processed or metabolized uh, by the liver cells and produce 25 hydroxy vitamin D3, 
after that they will be metabolized again this uh, component will be metabolized again by the kidney cells and they produce the 125 dihydroxy vitamin d3 which is the bioalgae molecule of vitamin d3 this will uh, will be used to study the fact that this metabolite has in the hex cells Sorry, in HL60 cells. The system is based on a two chamber interconnected microfluidic chip, which is observed here. Here. Fabricated by chip. This is a commercial chip made on demand. Microfluidic flow chips are connected with low pressure nanotube syringe. The individual chambers of the two compartment microfluidic platform, which are observed here, exhibited a length of 14.28 millimeters, a width of 5 millimeters, and a total volume of 36 microliters. The two compartments were connected by a 150 narrow channel. Here we can see the schematic. Uh, uh, and a scheme of the chip setup. These are the inlets. These both of them are the compartments for liver and kidney cells. This is the channel that connects both of them. And here are the outlets of the chip that are going to be used to collect the light. The cultivation areas in the chambers are surrounded by guidance barriers which heal the culture area from the high shear rate of the fluidic flow and in addition serve as an air bubble trap. This is the culture area and here are the trap. For the seeding of cells, cell culture areas were coated with 0.5% collagen solution to ensure ECM formation. Microscopical investigation of the cells in the compartment reveal confluent monolayers with sporadic multilayer formation. After three days in dynamic culture, cellular variability was as high as 97.2, more or less 2.2%, and 97.9, more or less 1.3% for FG2 and RP tech cells, respectively. Three dynamics of the chip were simulated with console multiplicity. Here we can see the microscopical investigation and the results from the simulation. The authors then evaluated the functionality of liver cells by measuring albumin production and observed a constant albumin secretion observed in this graph during the culture period. Uptake of FITC albumin was investigated as a marker for kidney cell activity. It is observed in this graph. In I. Significant increase in the uptake was found under fluidic flow compared to static culture. They also investigated the effect of on chip cultivation of the mRNA expression levels of vitamin D metabolizing cytochrome P's, CP2R1, CP, CYP27B1, CYP24A1 in RPT and RP2 cells and compared them to that of cells maintaining static culture conditions. Indeed, expression levels of these enzymes were found to be significantly induced with on-chip cultivation. These results clearly highlight the, highlight the advantages of the microfluidic setups in parts on cellular function. Study how the heloid of vitamin D3 supplies liver kidney chips induce a differentiation on HL60 cells. Uh, this is the setup the authors used. Here we can see that uh, after the chip uh, is the metabolite. Uh, it is located, uh, it is uh, perfused to an static culture of HL60 cells to study the response of these cancer cells, leukemia cells, to the metabolites produced in the 
After that, the different differentiation markers were uh, assessed using RTQPCR and FACS techniques. Among the known anti-tumor effects mediated by 125OH the 2D3 is this its its ability to induce differentiation in multiple tumor types such as prostate, breast, myeloid, leukemia cells. Investigate the possibility that the liver kidney microfluidic utilizes vitamin D3 to its bioactive form. The bioactive form is the one that I'm before calcitinin. We continue the authors introduce continues to introduce medium containing either vitamin D3. 20 microliters final concentration, micromolars or final concentration, or DMSO as a, as a flow rate of 20 microliters per hour or a period of 24 hours. It's using this setup. After passage through the chip, the allured medium was collected and used to treat HL60 cells for 24 hours. HL60 cells treated with the weight of vitamin D3 treated chips exhibited enhanced mRNA expression of both investigated differentiation markers compared to cells treated with medium eluted uh, from the MSO treated chips. Cells treated with the eluted medium of vitamin D3 treated chips exhibited higher expression of all investigated genes in combination to reference treatment with vitamin D3, including indicating metabolic transformation. The enhanced induction in the expression of these genes with a GBL weight may be due to some, such as the presence of vitamin D metabolites, GBL weight, or the secretion of factors by the liver and or kidney chambers in response to vitamin D3 in the medium that may have led to the potentiated induction in This is observed in this field. To investigate the necessity of both the liver and kidney cells metabolizing vitamin D3, the author seeded the two chip compartments with only HEP G2 cells, liver, liver, and with HEP2 RPTEC, liver, kidney. The mRNA expression levels of differentiation markers, except CD11B, were more potently induced by the liver kidney chip, as observed in this figure. The only one that has no differences is the distribution of CD11B uh, marker. And this illustrates the distinctive effect of consecutive metabolism. For the detection of vitamin D3 metabolism, the liver kidney chip awaits. The authors aim to investigate whether vitamin D3 metabolites were produced and secreted by cells in the microfluidic chip. They perform LCMSMS, which is a uh, mass spectrometry, to assess the presence of either vitamin D3, uh, 20, 25 OHD3, which is the most common form, 1 OHD3, which is an intermediate form of vitamin D3 that is processed in the body, or 125OH2D3, that is the active bioactive in the eluded medium of treated chips. Here we can see a peak corresponding to 25 OH. Uh, sorry, here in these two last. In this. Uh, as level that 5 and 6, we can see a peak corresponding to 25 OH D3 was detected in the medium eluded from both the liver, liver, and the liver, liver, kidney, kidney chips. Neither vitamin D3 nor 125OH2D3 were detected in the chip weights, possibly due to their either their short half life or technical limitations. Also, only 25OHD3 could be detected analytically. The biological effects of the E weight clearly demonstrate the capacity of this system to metabolize and to secrete activated vitamin D3. The experimental setup described here enables comprehensive, comprehensive tackling of these issues, since cell lines genetically modified to harbor common variants in vitamin D3 metabolizing genes may be used to investigate the functionality and effect of such mutations on vitamin D metabolism, as well as that of novel vitamin D pressure. Additionally, the system could be used 
to study the impact of the different drugs and nutrients of vitamin D metabolism, which may influence the outcomes of supplementation. The experimental setup described in this report could be exploited in studies investigating the metabolism and activities of vitamin D, as well as other micronutrients and xenobiotics.